Yo, what is up my Nakama? So my name is Daniel and I'm a current third year medical student. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about my plan on becoming a millionaire while I'm in medical school. So let's get started. So I know this sounds pretty crazy considering the amount of debt we have and the fact that we have no job, but my plan on becoming a millionaire in medical school is through my current investments. So first off, before I get into anything else that I'm gonna say in this video, I need to state that I'm not a financial advisor and you know, do not just immediately do whatever I'm gonna suggest in this video. Um, because honestly, at the end of the day, I don't think any of us have any idea what we're talking about. And it's all a gamble and a risk, but I'm taking this risk because um, I think it's well worth it and I'm gonna share it <laughs> in a little bit. But I just wanna state that I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a medical student with a crap ton of loans that I wanna get paid off so that I can have you know financial freedom moving forward. And I think finances and stuff is something that's not generally talked about amongst physicians or medical students. We kind of have this notion that we're gonna become rich doctors and be able to pay off all of our student loans. But some people are coming in with such huge amounts of loans, like 200,000 from undergrad, plus another 200,000 from medical school. So, you know, they're leaving their education after eight years or even 12 years of work um, with like half a million dollars in loans. So even if you're making like a resident salary and then you're gonna be making an attending salary, by the time you can actually start chipping into your loans, like it's like, you know, you're not gonna be a millionaire as a physician. Um, I think really the only ways to become really financially successful as a physician is like through your investments or through like side hustles like YouTube or creative work or anything like that. So that's why I like openly discussing it because I think it's important for all students, no matter if you're a medical student or a college student, to be familiar with investing so that you can at least put your money to work so that you can pay off your student loans and not have that burden moving forward. But anyways, uh, to get into my investment that hopefully does really well and makes me a millionaire so that I can pay off my student loans. But um, so I do dividend investing in the stock market and another form of investing which I've contributed a significant amount to is in crypto. So I do own Bitcoin and I do own Ethereum. But what I wanted to talk about in this video is a project called Ecomi. Um, specifically the VV marketplace and the OMI crypto token. So just to kind of explain what this token is before getting into some detail and sharing how much of it I own, basically what the Ecomi token is or the Ecomi um, business, they have two products basically. One is the VV marketplace and the second is the OMI token which is like the cryptocurrency behind their marketplace. So what Ecomi does is basically they have a marketplace for NFTs. And I'm not gonna explain what NFTs are in this video. There's a whole bunch of YouTube videos that do a much better job than I could in explaining them. But just a kind of one sentence summary is if you understand Pokemon cards, then I think you understand NFTs. Um, and what they do is they have like three dimensional and augmented reality NFTs in their marketplace. And they're pretty rare and um, they have a secondary marketplace where you can resell your NFTs. And I like to think of them as like Pokemon card collectibles. So, you know, people, they pay hundreds, if not thousands of dollars for Pokemon cards. And, you know, once they stop making Pokemon cards and there's a limited amount of them, they become more and more valuable as time goes on. And I feel like this is the similar concept with NFTs, where if you buy an NFT, you know, that was made yesterday and you hold on to it for two, three years, it's going to increase in value. Um, and if you want to keep that NFT just as like uh, memorabilia or if you just want to um, sell, resell the NFT after a few years, um, you could make a lot of profit by just holding on to it. And you know, some people they feel like NFTs were just a fad, but I feel like the VV marketplace is a marketplace that's going to dominate the NFT market for a few reasons. Um, one being their marketplace, they have, a they have a whole bunch of huge licensing deals with major brands um, like Sony, Cartoon Network, I think they have the NFL, they have Back to the Future. So they're in agreements with like huge brands and well-known like um, figures like Batman and Superman, like things that everyone knows about. So I feel like even if the NFT hype is going to decrease moving forward, I feel like they're still going to have a really strong presence in the NFT market. And I'm super hopeful 
because um, their NFT technology, it's not just like 2D images and GIFs and stuff. They have like three-dimensional figures. They're tapping into the augmented reality and virtual reality platforms. And I feel like they're gonna try and get into the gaming sector as well, where you can buy skins for games. And like, you know how many millions of dollars in revenue those gaming companies get, like Valorant or League of Legends, all those character skins, all those gun skins, they sell for so much money. So if those become NFTs, and you know they somehow collaborate with VV for this, um, then I think the OMI token or the crypto behind everything is going to explode. So uh, before moving forward, I want to share how much OMI I own, and because I like to be transparent about this, so let me quickly pull it up here. Okay, so I own my OMI on Trust Wallet, um, and so currently OMI it's only listed on a few exchanges like Gate.io and Bit4x. I actually bought my OMI on Bit4x and then transferred it to this trust wallet, which is like a more secure wallet because I have like the exact code um, to access this wallet. But as you can see here, I own a lot of OMI. This is the most amount of anything I've ever owned in my whole life. Um, exactly 1,051,000 OMI here, as we can see, which currently is equivalent to about $6,400. So I know this is a lot of money, and for me, it's a lot of money as well. And to some people, it's not a lot of money, like people who have millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands in the stock market, like 6,000 is a small amount, but this is the most money I've ever put into anything in my life. So for me, it's pretty big. And my average price, it's about um, six, it's about 0 0.0063 cents, so I'm losing a little bit, but I'm in this for the long term, so I don't care you know, if the price fluctuates. Um, here and there for the next few months because I truly believe in the success of this project um, And I hope that if at any point it reaches 50 cents or a dollar that I'll be able to pay off my medical school loans But just to explain further kind of why I believe in OMI a lot of the reason that I believe in OMI is because I like the CEO and I like the developers behind the VV marketplace and I like the tokenomics of this cryptocurrency so it's a little bit different than Bitcoin and Ethereum, um, but some of the principles are still the same. You know, it operates on the blockchain and all that type of stuff. Um, but with OMI, um, one thing to consider is first, it's a deflationary token. So there's a current max supply of 750 billion OMI. So as more OMI gets used up and as more people buy it, um, the amount of supply of OMI will decrease and hopefully that means the demand for OMI will increase. So hopefully that reflects the price of OMI. And there's a few ways that um, the circulating supply of OMI will actually decrease. One way is just people buying and holding OMI in their own wallets. So the second way that OMI gets burned from the circulating supply is when an average person um, or someone who owns OMI buys an NFT from the VV marketplace, that equivalent amount is burned from the wallet, um, from the circulating wallet of OMI, and that is sent to the burned wallet. So basically that OMI is just taken out of circulation and now there's less OMI available overall. And this can be huge depending on how popular the marketplace is. And uh, just to give like an example, let's say that someone bought a $10 NFT um, and the cool thing also about the marketplace is that you don't need to know anything about crypto or OMI. You can literally convert fiat money, like US dollars, into gems, which is the currency that they use in the VV marketplace. And then you can use those gems to buy the NFTs on the VV marketplace. So these gems in the background, um, one gem is one US dollar, but also um, in the background, these gems are also being converted to OMI and all that stuff in order um, to have it so that the OMI is burned. But so let's say, for example, you convert 10 US dollars to 10 um, gems, and then you use those 10 gems to buy a 10 gem worth item NFT from the VV marketplace, then that equivalent amount of OMI is also burned from the circulating wallet and that OMI is gone. So now there's that much less OMI available in the total circulating supply. And like this has so much potential, especially if they have huge collaborations with like Disney or, or Pokemon or Star Wars. I mean, they already have huge collaborations, but they're gonna keep on having um, different collaborations as time goes on. And they have these marketplace drops that happen. 
So I kind of only foresee good things moving forward. And this is something that I've definitely put a lot of time into, a lot of research into, because this is a huge investment. You know, $6,000 is not a little amount of money. It's a lot of money that I'm risking. And I am willing to risk that money. Like if I lose this entire $6,000, that will be extremely unfortunate. And I might cry a little bit, <laughs> but I'm also willing to put that risk in and see where this goes. And I'm really hoping that I'm in super early and that I've got in at a good average price. I think there's still an insane amount of room for this token and for the VV marketplace to grow. And that's kind of one of the main reasons that I made this investment. And I also personally do believe in the future of NFTs. I think there was a lot of hype um, going forward, but I think we haven't even seen the total applications of NFTs. Um, and I don't think it's too mainstream yet. Like you don't see kids um, and average people kind of getting into NFTs. Um, and I think as it becomes more mainstream and I think as it starts to permeate into like video games and everyday society, um, I think NFTs are going to become more and more kind of normal for us to talk about. And I hope I'm early in this investment and kind of just looking back, you know, when you think about Bitcoin and Ethereum or any stock in general, uh, there's a lot of times when you look back and you're like, dang, I wish I put in a hundred dollars into Bitcoin like six years ago, or I wished like two years ago, I put in a thousand dollars into Ethereum because now it just skyrocketed to the moon. And this is one of those investments that I feel like is going to skyrocket in the future. It might not necessarily skyrocket, but I feel like it'll continuously um, go upward in price as more and more Omi get burned. And I just kind of um, don't want to make that same mistake again, you know? I don't want to feel uh, left out from a project that, that I believe in and that I feel like is going to do well. So I put in a large amount of money in and it's a risk I'm willing to take. And you know, if by the end of medical school I'm a millionaire because of this, I'm going to look back into this video and just be really happy that I made this decision. And the opposite can certainly be true. Omi could go to zero, NFTs could all crash and I could lose this entire $6,000. And you know, at the end of the day, I'd still be okay with that because I'd be happy that, you know, I, I put in the risk and uh, <laughs> see what happened. But you know, I don't think that's gonna happen. I don't think Omi is gonna crash. I think there might be a total market um, correction with cryptocurrency, but even through that, I might just continuously buy more Omi. And um, hopefully, you know, if any crash happens to Bitcoin, I'm hoping that if NFTs take off and if the VV marketplace becomes super popular that it actually won't correlate with Bitcoin and the price will just be reflected based off of how well their NFT marketplace is doing. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I just kind of wanted to share this uh, somewhat unique investment that I'm doing and feel free to write in the comments if you've actually purchased any cryptocurrency or purchased Omi in particular. Um, I'm kind of interested in hearing, you know, what you guys all think of this crypto and what you think of NFTs in the future. Because, I mean, I certainly might be wrong about NFTs and about this cryptocurrency, but it's something that I believe in and it's something that I was willing to put a decent amount of money into. So I'm in for the ride. Um, hopefully it's not too much of a bumpy roller coaster, uh, but more of like a nice ascent up the mountain. Um, but you know if this goes to the moon, I'll be super happy. Um, I'll keep you guys updated as um, You know more news about Omi gets gets out and stuff But there's a ton of youtubers and financial people and cryptocurrency people that, that do a way better job than I do um, But I think it's pretty important um, For students and for medical students and college students to to be involved in finance and to be involved in investing so that's why I felt like sharing this um, big investment that I made. Um, but I hope you enjoyed something from this video. I hope you learned a little bit about cryptocurrency. Um, stay strong and healthy, everyone. Let's get those gains. Doge to the moon. <laughs> I'm kidding. Omi to the moon. Um, and as always, Dr. Bayo.